Thank you, Mr. Chairman. At the time that we were uh, fighting for and winning this international world order that we've been talking about today, uh, we were also building uh, many of the military installations throughout this country to support that, including many in, in Texas. I was just at uh, Dias Air Force Base this weekend, and they are operating out of airplane hangars for our B-1 bombers that were built 70 years ago. And to go inspect one of the B-1 bombers, you actually had to wear a hard hat because there's pieces of rebar that are falling from the ceiling. Um, you look at Fort Hood, and there are hundreds of millions of dollars in deferred maintenance costs that we haven't paid for and are just going to become more expensive the longer uh, we defer them. Uh, billions of dollars just in, in the state of Texas alone. When you add to that this AUMF authorized in 2001 that has not only been used to fight wars in Afghanistan, where we still are today, but has been used in five other countries as well, uh, including Iraq and Syria, Libya, Somalia, and Yemen. Um, the, the, the needs that we have, the wars that we're currently fighting, the projected costs to meet the threats that will come, none of that seems sustainable to me. Uh, and, and I think the ranking member used, used the word fantasy, that we're going to be able to pay for and meet all the commitments that we have identified. And when asked to, to help us make the tough choices, um, you have talked about cutting entitlements. Uh, we've talked about raising revenues, raising taxes. Uh, and, and I wonder, though, is there not a, a tougher choice to be made about uh, this world order and whether 70 plus years in um, it, it is sustainable uh, and uh, should not be rethought. It doesn't mean we, we stop being the indispensable country, because I agree with the Secretary's conclusion on that. And it doesn't mean that we have the leading role. Uh, but but I, I don't know that this trajectory is sustainable or that we should want to sustain it. And I join Mr. Banks, Mr. Jones, and others, and, and the two of you who uh, have called for a new AUMF. I think that's part of this. But can you talk about some, some bigger, tougher, international choices that we have to make, or, and this is a conclusion that a reasonable mind could come to, must we just muddle on along this, this current path and, and do the best that we can? Um, let me say, I do think that we have to look at it from the perspective of what threatens the United States. It is the job of the President to protect our people, our territory, and our way of life, and it is the job of Congress to be a part of that discussion to fund it, to have discussions about it, and to be a part of the decision of how to protect our people. I happen to believe that our people are most threatened when there are various disasters happening, uh, whether they are terrorists or whether they are um, climate change or whether they are people starving uh, or whether they are refugees who are coming and uh, have become uh, a part of a complicated political situation. So I do think that uh, we have a stake in not just thinking about ourselves, that our security depends on what is happening in other parts of the world. I think that one of the answers here is to develop the partners, the alliances. And I think the alliance structure is something that has to be made to work and the others have to pay their fair share. We also need to think about how to develop those uh, forces in other countries that can help us, whether they are those that work on the governance issues or on various military issues, we cannot operate in the world alone. And so that's the part that I think we have to work on um, and decide that we are not safer if we are isolated. Uh, an isolationist America is the most dangerous thing for Americans as well as for the world. Well, one, I'll probably get myself in a little trouble on this one, but one of the things about the infrastructure that you talked about is we have more infrastructure than we need given the size of our current military. And, you know, the BRAC process, I haven't followed it as closely as I probably should, it seems to have broken down. And one of the difficult issues is that Congress is going to have to both hold the administration's feast to the fire in terms of strategy and prioritization, but Congress is also going to have to make some tough decisions about allowing for this infrastructure to shrink to the size of what we really need given the military we have today. I, I think Madeline would agree 
the current conception of the new of, of the international order is not sustainable. That's why we say it needs to be revised and revitalized. We may have made huge investments in helping Europe, Japan, South Korea emerge to be the healthy, prosperous societies they are. We helped China integrate into the international system. We, are, uh, we have seen the growth of India. These countries need to be given a greater role to play in the international system. But that, of course, comes with some responsibilities, and part of that responsibility is not only responsible action and constructive action, but also to foot some of the bill. So I think there has to be a readjustment and a rebalancing, a look at division of labor and, and, and division of responsibilities. But if we step out from that process and do not lead it, an international order that will, will emerge in the traditional way, which is it will benefit the big powers like Russia and China at the expense of the little powers. That's not the international order that we want. It's not the international orders in our interest, and it's not an international order that will, will provide enduring peace and security. Mr. Lobiondo. 